in between the end of 2009 to 2013, Insomniac Games took the Ratchet and Clank series into a new direction. Rather than providing single player only affairs, they decided to branch out into a more cooperative shooter type of genre. I'm still a little hesitant to call these games spinoffs since they don't really differ from what the series is known for, which is point A to point B third person shooting with a mix of platforming topped up with fun and memorable stories. In fact, the 10th anniversary Ratchet and Clank game happened to be one of these side games, and it also happened to be the worst one in the entire franchise. And yes, that includes the mobile game. For those who are unaware, Ratchet & Clank Full Frontal Assault is a third-person shooter with a focus on base defense elements. The goal is to accomplish the objectives that are laid out for you while making sure that your own base doesn't take too much damage by setting up different kinds of defenses, ranging from turrets, mines, and shields. It's simple on paper, and simple in execution as well, but that's the main problem. The execution of the ideas are so poorly thought out that it goes against what the series entirely stands for. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so I'll just start with the story. Ratchet, Clank, and Quark are aboard the Starship Phoenix 2, minding their own business before it's interrupted by a mysterious figure claiming to have disabled the planetary defense centers on three planets, which, of course, turns out to be true. After the crew manages to get the first one back online, the figure reveals himself to be... Stuart Zergo. Yep, that one guy from Ratchet 2 that gave you the bolt magnet. It turns out that he wants to get revenge on Quark because the galaxy forgave him for all the horrible things he's done. Wait, hey asshole, remember when you forgave Quark for being the villain the first game? Also, why are you only doing this now? Also, who gives a shit about Stuart Zergo? I didn't even know this guy had a name until I played this one. Stuart Zergo looks like someone who would say the n-word while playing a video game and claim he's not racist because he has a black friend. I bet Stuart Zergo also browses Reddit and 4chan so we can complain that Tifa's breast size aren't big enough in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Stuart Zergo is a living fuck. Ah! Wait, where was I? Oh yeah. After the Q-Force reactivates all the defense centers, it turns out that the Starship Phoenix was hacked by Stuart Zergo while being disguised as the plumber. Not sure how he managed to communicate with the crew while in the ship without anyone noticing, but whatever. He plans on framing Quark by using the weather system to... Uh, I don't know, actually. Anyways, the Q-Force managed to locate Stuart Zergo and take him out. That's it. That's the whole story. It only took me one minute to summarize it, and there were eight minutes of cutscenes in total, and holy shit, the writing quality is absolute garbage. The Ratchet and Clank games are known for a semi-serious story mixed with a lot of comedy, so it doesn't become too dark. Full Frontal Assault attempts to do comedy, but oh my god, it's awful. There's nothing worse than an unfunny joke that goes on for too long, or if it's too frequent. The game seriously became dated with its references to internet culture and memes. Like, not even in an endearing way. They do shit like have the Gangnam Style dance and the fucking Troll song. Like, this isn't even irony, this is just straight up using the song. You destroyed my youth! I'll see you soon. Do I even need to tell you why this makes the game age like milk? I know some people would want to make the argument saying that they did the same sort of thing in Ratchet and Clank 3 when they made a character called Courtney Gears as a parody. I would like to argue this. Courtney Gears is a reference, yes, but what they do with their makes are not only more interesting, but also more memorable. The writers don't just point and laugh at the parody, they go above and beyond and make her not only a key player in the plot of Ratchet 3, but also write an entire song for her to sing about robots overthrowing and taking over the universe. Just doing a reference and not adding anything doesn't make it funny. A lot of what Stuart Zergo says falls into this camp. There are multiple times where he says something outdated and it just makes me wince. Engaging shield like a boss. Clearly, the game didn't focus on story, so let's just see how well it actually plays. As I stated earlier, the game is a third-person shooter with tower defense elements. You have your main base with multiple generators, if the generators get destroyed, you lose. The goal of each planet is to reactivate the planetary defense center while you defend your base from the oncoming threats by purchasing turrets, mines, and shields. You can also defend your base with your own firepower, which is highly recommended since there's a fuckload of enemies that come at you and your defenses do jack shit against them. Whenever you start a mission, you don't have any weapons. There's always a vendor at the beginning that can give you a few bolts for turrets as well as a weapon. Here's the problem, you can only pick one weapon at a vendor before having to head out and find another one. But the weapons that they give you are PREDETERMINED. You can't have the buzz blades and the combustor at the same time, ever. You can only get one or the other. This goes against what the entire franchise is about. Ratchet and Clank has always been about letting the player take care of any situation with any weapon that they're choosing. The fun of the game was experimenting and see what results you get by using different weapons and combining strategies. In a full frontal assault, if you happen to pick a weapon you don't like, or quite frankly sucks like this one, you're shit out of luck since you don't have a way to exchange them. You're stuck with the weapon until you find another vendor and pray it has something that isn't awful. 
but there are also special weapon vendors hidden in the stages. Two to be exact, each one will hold the Warmonger and the Plasma Bomb Launcher. The placement of these weapon vendors could be a bit out of the way, which could lead to a risk reward system. Oh, do I risk going for the special weapon and leave my base to fend for itself? Or do I make a mad dash and try to get it as soon as possible? The problem is, it's almost mandatory to get these weapons because of one major flaw with them. The weapons barely have any ammo in this game. I've constantly almost run out of shots during every encounter since the ammo damage output is the weakest it's ever been. Sometimes I straight up run out of ammo and I have to backtrack just to fill it up to finish a single encounter. The Warmonger, a rocket launcher, is so pitiful later in the game. It also takes forever to level it up, making it outclassed by almost every other tool. The mission design is so fucked, they go on for far too long and get so visually tiring. You're only allowed to go so far and try to accomplish what you're supposed to do before you need to scurry back to your base and defend it. This doesn't seem so bad at first, but the amount of time you have to do it and the frequency begins to add up. These missions wouldn't be nearly as long if they just let me go do what I'm supposed to do. Quark and Clank are just sitting on these turrets doing jack shit. Can't one of them just watch the base while I'm gone? I know this game is co-op and no, I don't care. It's only local first of all, meaning that I don't have anyone to help me slog through this. And even so, it shouldn't excuse the poor single player experience. Ratchet and Clank, all for one, is also a game designed with co-op in mind. But if you're playing by yourself, you have an AI partner to help you out through the entire game so it isn't overwhelming. Full Front Assault doesn't have anything like that, meaning the Q-Force consists of Ratchet doing all the hard work while Clank and Quark watch TV back on the starship. You can only accomplish so much before your base reminds you that you need to head back and spend your money on defenses, hunker down for a bit, and make sure your generators stay up. I was getting so bored constantly stopping what I'm supposed to do and try to make my way back before too much damage was done. The first map had a few teleporters sprinkled about, why don't the other ones have that? Well, they do when you're ready to go fight the final wave of the level, but I would appreciate having a faster way to get back to my base during the main mission. Level design does have a few shortcuts you're able to take to help get back to the base faster, but it doesn't fix the issue completely. Strangely enough, the slingshot is something that you have to get at a vendor at the start of every mission. What the hell, guys? We don't need to get the grind boots at the start of the mission either, so what's with the swing shot? This is just needless padding. All of this back and forth bullshit. Having to find vendors to reobtain the weapons I just used really sours my mood. I spend so much time at the start of every mission just getting my equipment back, grinding for bolts, and upgrading my base just so I can start playing the mission as actually intended. The objectives for every planet are all the same until the last one, where it tries to do something a little more unique. What the planet takes on is literally the same one as the second mission, except covered in snow this time. Like, this is just lazy. Actually, let's talk about the last tower defense mission for a second, because man, oh man, is it awful. You have to take out 10 of these jamming devices that are hidden all over the map. Seems easy enough. The problem is that your base is constantly assaulted by the most aggressive enemies in the games that straight up run past your turrets that can destroy your 3000 bolt warmonger turrets, forcing you to purchase new ones, as well as tanks coming in from both sides with airships. If you manage to get through all that while trying to destroy the jamming devices, you need to escort a bomb or whatever to the enemy base. Still not bad? Well how about you defend the bomb with only a few turrets and mines at the very end while multiple waves of enemies attempt to blow it up? And the worst part is, I set off a Groovatron mine at the end of the level causing my game to fucking lock up on this black screen, meaning I have to play through it all over again. All 50 minutes of it. I have never been so close to just calling it quits, especially for a Ratchet and Clank game. This is a children's game, and I'm here just barely able to finish it, but I wanted to stick through to the end just to see how it plays out. <sighs> the final mission of the game is an assault on Zergo's base, and this one certainly feels the most like an actual Ratchet and Clank game, and it really makes the inclusion of limited weapon vendors all the more aggravating when you need to take out so many enemies with such a limited selection of weapons. But I appreciate the design change for the final mission, even though all you're really doing is just disarming bombs and fighting enemies. The final boss is a pushover. He has a shitload of health, but it doesn't really matter because he does next to no damage. If you die by getting hit by an off-screen explosion, you just respawn with no penalty. I gotta say though, he starts spawning a fuck ton of enemies and begins to plant bombs like a madman. It gets really annoying to deal damage to Zergo since he's almost always doing this. You don't even get to arrest him for causing all this trouble. Quark just accidentally drops him down a pit and we never see him again. 
I'm just gonna assume that the fall ruptured his spinal cord, so he's stuck at the bottom of the dark cave with no food and he dies of starvation. The total runtime of the game was 3 hours, and that's not including the time I had to restart the last mission because of a game crash. There isn't much to do after you finish the game since the online multiplayer is dead, which is a shame because I never got to try it out, but oh well. Overall, Ratchet Clank Full Frontal Assault isn't an enjoyable time. The design is too frustrating for anyone other than diehard fans to really get into, and if you do get the hang of it, it becomes very tedious and boring very quickly. It feels like a downgrade of the multiplayer mode from Ratchet 3, which was just an afterthought to an already completed single player game. I suggest you play that instead if you want to get a feeling of what Ratchet & Clank is really about. Hey hey, thank you for making it to the end. I just have a couple things I want to say, and this is gonna be a little unscripted. First of all, I'd like to thank you for staying to the end of the video. It means a lot to me that you would do that. That means I'm at least doing something right. Uh, the second person I'd like to thank is my good friend Nolan for helping me out with pretty much all the videos I do make, even though I know it takes a long time for me to do it. Uh, he really helps me go over scripts, any suggestions, any sort of like editing trick he wants to show me, and I very much appreciate that. So if you have the time and you kind of like the videos I make, you, you would definitely like the ones he does too. Uh, I really recommend his video on Gravity Rush 2, it's very well made and it's a lot more positive than this one is. Because he actually enjoys that game, I'm like, uh, I'm like this one. I don't really have any plans for um, a follow-up video to this one at all. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do next. I had some ideas, but I'm not really um, fully committed to anything yet. But when that comes, it's probably gonna come a lot faster than uh, five months in between the videos. Uh, hopefully, anyways. That's really all I have to say, so uh, take care.